Every now and then, you've got to clean up your home lab. And a lot of people are telling me this is definitely not a home lab. I hear you. And I uh, look forward to reading what you think this might be classified as in the comments below. Also, while you're down there, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Today, I'm going to be looking at cleaning up some things. Uh, so when I do a bunch of hardware stuff, and especially when I do software configuration things, it gets messy. And so every now and then I've got to kind of put everything back into its place. And we've had some new updates as I've been moving away from things like the R930s. Again, quad socket monster, very powerful, pretty loud and very energy inefficient machines compared to more modern epics. So the storage server that I recently put together from scratch here sets down here, runs all the time. Of course, we've got two JBODs still in operation and I just got, this is so exciting because this is like my 50th serial cable. This serial cable actually allowed me for the first time to communicate with the EMMs for my NetApp DE6600s. That is a definite must check out video if you're interested in mega storage at pretty cheap prices. Those are usually very, very affordable. But I was able to isolate the functioning, non-functioning. It gives me tray by tray level statuses. So I was able to quickly diagnose instead of guesswork diagnose a lot of the different JBODs. So the JBODs all actually now have fully functional trays in them and I hope to be able to get some better performance statistics. There was definitely a lot of performance issues I was hitting before. But we're going to take a look at a couple of hardware things that I'm going to swap out in this rig. I've got currently a 3070 setting in there. I'm going to be putting the A4000 back in there and also putting in a dual NVMe 4.0 storage. These are Intel drives that we're going to be tossing back into this booger. And man, these are fast. All right, let's pull it on out and get it. <clears throat> Ready to change. Time to get this 3070 out of here. And of course, one of the nice things about servers is they're really, really generous bifurcation allotments. And I'm going to move this HyperX all the way down. And now we're going to put the A4000 with 16 gigabytes of VRAM up here. And this case has not ran into any overheating problems, but it definitely is not ideally the depth that you would want for having GPUs. All right. There we go. So that is actually a really quiet little machine. Now, this is the old Dell Art 720 XD. This is my prior TrueNAS machine, and it's been great. It's run really well. Everything is connected to 100 gigabit networking, so I kind of did the jump that is very typical for a lot of home labbers. 10 gig, 40 gig, and then 100 gig eventually. So I've got an SN2700 now, that's a Mellanox 100 gigabit switch with uh, quite a few ports of 100 gigabit connectivity. And you can use that with things like RDMA that will be in some future videos. There's so many videos that we're gonna have related to some of this stuff. So if you're interested in seeing something in particular, let me know. But as you can tell, one of the things that's going on here is cable danger. And having this over here has presented some cable danger. So I'm gonna need to route some cables in a different location, especially this 100 gigabit cable here. So this is a QSFP28 going over to my Mellanox uh, CX4 over here. So I definitely need to change this and make sure that this is able to span possibly up 
possibly around, probably gonna end up going with some more fiber. And so for the fiber for these 100 gigabit connections, you can use an OS2. And I've got some really cheap Intel things that I've been using for the transceivers. They do need heat sinks on them, but once you put a heat sink on, they work really great. Of course, we've got our new build over here that's setting and running right now. Actually, you can see it over in that monitor over there. The other 4K monitor that I use is kind of the debug TV. And so this is the build that we just put together, the $350 12 gigabyte VRAM 3060. This is actually a really decent little machine. So these are all Proxmox based and this gives me a lot of flexibility and I have a lot of Proxmox nodes. So to maintain quorum on all of these devices, you actually have to have quite a few. Now with Proxmox, you have a limit of, I think it's 15 or 16 devices that you can have joined together into a cluster. And so these Zima boards here, did some reviews on them not terribly long ago. They are incredibly low wattage. Each one of them serves a kind of little bit different function. This one's an OTA actually, and then it records to this one terabyte uh, SSD that I've got here. This is just a cheap little uh, 2.5 and 210 network switch. Of course, everybody's got a Raspberry Pi and some various cables for mainly things like the coax. I use an antenna in the attic for that. And of course that feeds over here to this K-World device. But this is basically the D-Mark for the house where the wiring inside gets broken out and comes this way as well. It also provides me a D-Mark for the workstation. And as you can see, the workstation is quite a purpose-built machine itself and it is the backbone of everything you see happening here, and it makes everything possible that you guys actually see. So the Zima boards that I've got, they do a really good job of being quorum devices, and they're also so small, you can hide them anywhere. And idling at about five watts, these things are really awesome. And they can actually run quite a few little uh, LXCs, maybe a couple of VMs, but definitely they are very friendly for the LXCs to run on them. They also are part of a high availability cluster that allows me to never have my internet go down. And you can check that out right here also, where I use this switch and just a couple of different things about the way that I set it up in Proxmox that provides me a never down, high available, always up, virtualized firewall of OpenSense. And of course these have two network connections and that facilitates that being able to happen quite nicely. So there is a lot that happens in this garage and there's a lot of cleaning up that needs to happen in this garage. Holy shit, there are so many bugs under here. Oh my God, this is, this is, this is a lot of bugs. This is a lot more bugs than there was last time. So I do spray quite heavily uh, poison underneath here and uh, I'm encouraged that nothing's walking around or moving. So everything got a lot more buggy when I brought the lawnmower in here to try to fix the carburetor. Turns out I'm not good at that. So uh, probably gonna have to wheel that thing off to somebody that's a professional. But I broke the seal basically on all of this and need to retape it. It really, uh, is unfortunately also even slightly dangerous. There has been uh, one snake that I caught in here, this dude. And uh, yeah, without that tape down at the bottom, it's kind of a little bit inviting around here. Me and a friend bought an insane, I mean, absolutely insane gov deals deal. And well, I'll tell you what, the semi-trailer full of hardware is what showed up. And I don't know if I was actually ready for that, to be honest with you. But you can check all of that out in the channel history. And yeah, there is quite a bit of stuff that I've got to put up. And most of what I put up goes into the storage that I have down here below. And there is just so much old in here that does not need to be here anymore that I definitely need to spend some time cleaning some of that out. Stuff that's Gen 3, Gen 2, old cards that I'm never gonna use, definitely need to be put out to pasture. Ooh, this one's exciting though. And of course I do miss the T620 not being in operation, but it definitely saw a lot of service. So it was a great device to have for all the years that I had it. Unfortunately, 
that motherboard dying was pretty much the end of it. So you can see over here our network stack. This is gonna get a little bit of rearranging at some point, not in the near term, but definitely keep your eyes open probably around the holidays for a complete network reworking. And I may even try to find some new racks. I'm pretty disappointed in the quality of racks I got. These are some Dell racks that probably came from the mid 2000 timeframe, and they just don't have the things that you really want in racks like zero U hangers in the back. So if you think you have a mess in your garage or your basement or your whatever is happening, maybe you've taken over a whole floor of your house, let me know in the comments below. I look forward to reading your stories and wish me luck. This is what I'm gonna be doing on my Saturday is cleaning, rearranging, and making all of this happen.